Grace and mercy, power and peace are yours today and every day through our Savior Jesus. Amen. Our message today is based on these words from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I encourage you to pay careful attention to verse 15. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Some stories are too good not to share. Like this one, the story of the greatest prison break you've never heard of. A prison break pulled off by a man named Wit. Wit was a good man. He was a selfless father, an army veteran, an upstanding citizen who had never broken the law in his life. And yet, here he was, facing a life sentence in the world's worst prison for a crime he did not commit. With its harsh guards and brutal conditions, its severe overcrowding and extremely limited food, this prison was rightly described as hell on earth. So naturally, Wit wanted out. He wanted to escape from this hell on earth prison so that he could tell the authorities about all the terrible things that were happening there. So Wit decided to escape. But in order to escape, he had to get quite creative. Wit used bread dough to make molds of door locks and gate hinges. He then took those doughy molds and used them to handcraft one-of-a-kind tools that allowed him to unlock the doors and open those gates. Knowing that once outside the gates, he would be tracked by guards with dogs, before making his bid for freedom, Wit coated his shoes with tobacco to throw the dogs off the scent. When the time for his escape came, Wit slipped through the gates. He ran for miles across the countryside. He came to a wide river, swam halfway across that, where he grabbed a hold of a passing boat and evaded his pursuers by floating his way to freedom. With his amazing escape complete, Wit went straight to the authorities, and he told them about all the atrocities, the horrors he had witnessed inside those cold, gray walls. That's when the authorities decided enough was enough, and they stepped in to put an end to this prison once and for all. That's the true story of how the authorities, also known as the Allied armies from World War II came in and liberated this prison. Prison which more often went by a different name, concentration camp. Concentration camp called Auschwitz. All that. But thanks to one brave Polish citizen, a man named Wit, short for Witold Pilecki, who broke out of Auschwitz so that he could save others. Now you tell me, is that an incredible story or what? It's a story that is too good not to share. But up until recently, I had not heard about Wit Pilecki. And I'm guessing that for many of you, that was your first time hearing about him as well. So here we have this. It's an amazing story, a story that is too good not to share, and yet people don't know about it. 
which means people aren't sharing it. And that reminds me of another story that is too good not to share, but which, sadly, many people have not heard. This other story is also the tale of a prison break, but it's not a break from a physical prison. Instead, it's a break from a spiritual prison. The spiritual prison of sin and guilt and shame, a a prison to which you and I had been condemned for all eternity. Until Christ Jesus came along, the prison break for the ages set us free. Verse 15 of our reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1 sums up this story well. It's the Apostle Paul writing to young Pastor Timothy. I'll read it one more time. He says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. This is God's word. There is a lot packed into that brief verse. So let's break it down phrase by phrase. The Apostle Paul begins by writing, here is a trustworthy saying. And the way he originally wrote that sentence puts a strong focus on the word trustworthy. So it's like he's saying that what follows is absolutely reliable. It is completely dependable, utterly unimpeachable. It's as truthful as something can be. And it's not just a trustworthy saying, but he said it also deserves full acceptance. It is something that everyone should believe. And it's a little bit stronger than that. It's something everyone must believe if they're going to be in heaven. So what is this trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance? Who is it about? It's about the one called Christ the eternal Son of God, the promised Messiah from the Old Testament, the anointed one. But it's also about the one called Jesus, a true human being, just like you and me, named Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. And the remarkable truth here is that the Christ and Jesus, they are one and the same. Christ Jesus, who is fully and completely God, but at the same time is also fully and completely human. Christ Jesus, who is eternal, he has no beginning, no end, but at the same time, he was also born of the Virgin Mary and would later die on the cross. That man, the God-man, Christ Jesus, did what our next phrase says, he came into the world. He set aside his full power and authority as God. He took on human flesh and blood, becoming just like us. He sent it into our world, to the realm of sin and misery, pain, loss, sadness, heartbreak. He came to a place he didn't belong to a people who would ignore him and reject him, deny him and harass him, crucify and kill him. He willingly endured all that because Christ Jesus came into the world on a mission. And his mission was simple. He came to save sinners. Now, Since Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, that naturally assumes there are sinners in this world who need saving. And you know as well as I do that of course there are sinners in this world who need saving. There are tons of sinners in this world who need saving. Sinners like me. And sinners like you. And sinners like the Apostle Paul the man who penned our lesson for today, Paul claimed for himself a rather unique title. He called himself the worst, or chief of sinners. And it's not hard to see why. 
When you look at Paul's rap sheet, it's abundantly clear that he deserves that title. By his own admission, the man was an unbeliever, a murderer, a persecutor, a blasphemer, a violent man. In short, he was a person who was actively fighting against God. Sounds like the worst of sinners, doesn't he? But before we rush to judgment on Paul, let's take a closer look at ourselves. Are we really any better? We are sinners who lie and cheat, hate and hurt, who lust and steal, envy and disobey, dishonor and disrespect and more. And and sometimes we don't realize that's what we're doing, but many times we know exactly what we are doing. We know full well that what we are doing or saying or thinking is the exact opposite of what God wants. And yet, we do it anyway. Maybe it's not just Paul who call himself the worst of sinners. Because that sounds an awful lot like me. That sounds a lot like you. We can run, but we can't hide from that title, worst of sinners. Here's the thing. That's exactly who Christ Jesus came into the world to save. Sinners. Sinners like me. And sinners like you. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, which means we qualify. He came to save. Christ Jesus lived a perfect life, resisting temptation, defying the devil. He did that for you. Christ Jesus died a painful death on the cross, carrying the weight of the world's sins. He did that for you. Christ Jesus rose from the grave. He triumphed over death and the tomb forever. He did that for you. Christ Jesus has expunged sin from your record. He has broken you out of that prison of sin and guilt and shame. He has taken away that title, worst of sinners, and instead replaced it with the words, not guilty of every single sin. Because Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, your guilt, gone. And your conscience, clean. And your shackles of sin, they lie shattered. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That means he came to save you. Can there be a more beautiful thought Can there be a more profound idea? Can there be a more trustworthy saying? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It really is a trustworthy saying, and it deserves full acceptance. It deserves to be believed and trusted with all your heart and soul and strength. But it deserves more than that. This trustworthy saying doesn't just deserve to be fully believed. It also deserves to be fully shared. Because like that story of Witold Pilecki breaking out of Auschwitz, this is too good not to share. And like that story of Wit and his prison break, far too many people have not heard this trustworthy saying. But unlike that story of Wit, This is something people must hear. They must believe if they're going to be in heaven. So now the question for us is rather simple. How can you share this? How can you share this trustworthy saying with others? Three ways come to mind. First, through a church. 
specifically through your church. Your church has been faithfully proclaiming this trustworthy saying for many years. Keep it up. Keep doing that. But don't just sit on the sideline. Don't just leave that important work to your called workers and to your leaders here at your congregation. Get involved. Seek out ways to serve. Ask what you can do, and then do whatever you can, whenever you can, wherever you can, to ensure that your church continues proclaiming this trustworthy saying for many more years to come. Second, through a school. Specifically, through the school that I work for and represent, a school called Luther Prep. Luther Prep is one of our church body's high schools, which means even though it's some 1,200 miles from here, up, up in Watertown, Wisconsin, it really is your school. At Luther Prep, we have one simple mission, and that is to encourage our high schoolers to be proclaimers and sharers of this trustworthy saying. About half of our 400 students will proclaim this trustworthy saying as pastors in our churches, as teachers in our Lutheran schools, as staff ministers who serve God's people. And about half of our students will share this trustworthy saying as parents and friends, neighbors and coworkers. When you support a school like Luther Prep with your offerings, your prayers, or by sending students to us to be encouraged toward that full-time ministry, you are ensuring that this trustworthy saying will be proclaimed for generations to come. Third, through a person. Specifically, through you. My friends in Jesus, this trustworthy saying is too good not to share. So share it. But if you think you can't, if you think you're not ready, you're not able, you're not prepared or equipped, then just remember, being the worst of sinners, title which we all can claim, that also makes you the best of sharers. Because you know what it's like to be locked in that prison of sin and guilt and shame. And you know what it's like to have Christ Jesus break you out of that prison. You live this trustworthy saying every single day. And that means you already have everything you need to share it with others. Because all you have to do is tell people what God has done for you. And that he's also done that for them. My friends and our Savior, share this message. Share it with others far and wide. Share it with others near and dear. Share it with your family and your friends, with your relatives and neighbors, with your colleagues and your coworkers. Share it with the full number of people in your life so that they too can fully accept and believe this trustworthy saying. It is too good to simply keep to ourselves. It is too good not to share. Now the only question left is this. Who will you share it with? I can't answer that question for you. I don't know the people in your life. But what I can do is provide a little extra encouragement, a little extra motivation, a little extra oomph as you leave church today and you get ready to share this trustworthy saying with others. I'd like to take you back to that story of Wit Pilecki. It really is an incredible tale. But I haven't even told you the best part. See, that story of Wit, it's not really the story of a prison break out, but a prison break in. Three years before his amazing escape from Auschwitz, Witt lived as a free man in the countryside nearby. And Witt had a strong hunch that something wasn't right inside those prison walls. He saw thousands of prisoners arrive, but never saw anyone leave. 
He smelled the great smokestacks burning night and day. He saw the terrible ash falling from the sky, and Wit knew something was wrong. But in order to prove it, he had to get inside. In order to get inside, he had to get captured. So that's what he did. He got himself captured on purpose, sent to the world's worst prison. Think about what he did. He willingly entered a world of pain. He voluntarily suffered hellish conditions. He put his life on the line, knowing full well that he might lose it, just for the chance to save some. Hopefully that reminds you of someone else. Someone else who willingly entered a world of pain. Someone else who voluntarily suffered not just hellish conditions, but hell itself. Someone else who put his life on the line and ultimately gave it up just to save you. Hopefully that reminds you of Christ Jesus. Not only did he break you out of that prison of sin and guilt and shame, voluntarily, happily, suffered hell, gave up his life to do so. That trustworthy saying, as good as it is, just got better. Because now you see just how much God loves you. Now you see the lengths he would go to save you. Now you see just how much you mean to him. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. A trustworthy saying too good to just keep to ourselves. A trustworthy saying too good not to share. So let's get out there. Let's share it. Amen. <laughs>